Today, I would like to talk about science, quantum mechanics to be precise. And just a small disclaimer, uh, my understanding of quantum mechanics is rudimentary at best, so I beg you to please all bear with me as I grossly oversimplify some of the most complicated and mysterious science humankind has ever encountered. So with that said, <laughs> imagine if you will, that over here on your left is an atom. And then imagine that over here on your right is yet another atom. In each of these atoms, we find a nucleus of protons and neutrons and a surrounding cloud of electrons. These are normal garden variety atoms, but they're each doing their own thing. They're pulsing and moving at a rate that's all their own. In other words, these two totally normal atoms are two totally separate things. But for a long time, there was this theory that hinted at another possibility, the possibility that maybe these two separate things might not always be so separate. But it was just a crazy theory, pretty hard to prove. That is, until lasers got involved. Because everything is better with lasers, am I right? Scientists tried shooting lasers at each of these atoms, and the lasers caused these atoms to spin faster and faster and faster until finally, they each emitted a photon. And scientists found that when these photons collided in just the right way, something incredible would happen. The two atoms would become exactly alike. Two separate things, had become the same thing, intrinsically connected somehow. Any measurement taken in one atom was sure to be exactly the same in the other. Any change in one was instantaneously matched in the other. Scientists discovered that they could pass their hands between these atoms at opposite ends of the room, just creating some interference, and the phenomena remained. The atoms could be in separate rooms, divided by walls, same thing. Scientists have even separated particles by more than 85 miles, and it still holds true. And the theory goes that in the natural world, this probably happens all the time. So right now, there may be particles in me that are one and the same with particles in you. This idea that two objects in different places can still be the same object is called quantum entanglement. But it also reminds me of something else. Something that frankly is way more complicated, but it goes by a simpler name. Love. Love has some striking similarities with quantum entanglement. When two very separate things get worked up enough to send out a spark of some kind and that spark collides in just the right way, well, two become one and all that. But I'm not just talking about that romantic kind of love. You see, I have a crazy theory and it's pretty hard to prove. But I wonder if love can unite us. I wonder if love can take two unlike things, things that might be pretty different due to politics or race or income or experience or opinion and make those things somehow one. And then I wonder if that connection can persist through some interference. I wonder if it can pass through dividing walls I wonder if it can cross impossible distances. You and me, entangled together, bonded, united. Now that's a theory that I'd like to experiment with. <laughs>